Well, this is really um, a special day today. Um, I want to welcome everyone and especially um, Susan Fisher Sterling and um, and of course, Susan Wallach, I want to thank you for putting together the program and Sydney for being here. Thank you so much. And also our two scholarship recipients. It's so exciting that we're going to get to meet them today. So without further ado, I am going to turn the program back over to um, Jamie and she's going to introduce um, Shailene and Kennedy, and they're going to speak to us for a few minutes, and then uh, we'll go into our program with Sydney and um, and Susan. So, um, thank you all for joining us. Well, hi everyone. It's so lovely to see you all today, and it's so fun to be gathered here and look in gallery view um, and see everyone. But I am so excited to be able to introduce two CCA students who were the recipients of the SF Nimwa scholarship that. Um, all of you made possible. And I just wanted to also give a special thanks for the recognition that you gave to me in that name that was completely unexpected um, and something that just was really meaningful to me. It's such a, um, a privilege and a joy to be able to work with this group and be part of these studio visits. So thank you everyone um, for that. Um, but we have two CCA students with us today. We have Shailen Haynes and Kennedy Morgan. And um, I would like to invite each of them to introduce themselves. We'll start with Shaylin, if that's okay. And um, everyone just wants to learn a little bit more about you and your practice. Sure, hi, it's so nice to be here and see you all. Um, my name is Shaylin Haynes. I am a second year curatorial practice student um, in CCA's graduate program. Um, I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. I um, briefly studied painting in my undergraduate degree at Maryland Institute College of the Arts and then switched over and finished my bachelor's degree at UC Berkeley in political science. So I had this sort of bizarre dual um, educational experience in undergrad. Um, and after college, I spent time trying to find a way to, to make those two interests meet in a meaningful way. Um, so I spent some time in the Peace Corps. I worked in the nonprofit realm. Um, before coming to CCA, I was recently the operations manager at Creativity Explored, which is a nonprofit studio and gallery for adult artists with developmental disabilities here in San Francisco. Um, and I loved working at Creativity Explored, but I found myself really wanting to be on the exhibition side of, of arts nonprofits. So that's what led me to CCA. Um, Currently, I am working as the Richard A. Ward Fellow at um, the DeRosa Center for Contemporary Art in Napa. Um, I'm also finishing up my thesis work. So the curatorial practice program has two thesis projects. Um, there's a more like traditional written thesis that we do individually, um, which I'm writing on the Museum of Conceptual Art, which is a, was an alternative art space in San Francisco in the 1970s. And I'm specifically looking at the role that feminist performance played in that space. So that feels pretty relevant to this group. Um, and then the second project is a collectively curated exhibition that we do as a graduating cohort. Um, so that will open at the CCA Wattest Institute in May. Um, and it's a group exhibition of contemporary artists centering the labor of care and informal systems of support um, in light of the past year's events. Um, so yeah, it's such a pleasure to be here um, to meet you all and I'm very honored and grateful um, to receive this scholarship. So thank you. Thank you, Shailen, for that great introduction. And maybe you can put in the link to the announcement the Wattis gave about the upcoming exhibition that you and your cohort are working on. So everyone's aware um, of that when it comes up, that would be great. Um, Fabulous. And next, I would like to introduce Kennedy Morgan, who's an undergraduate painting and drawing student at CCA, to share more with us about her work. Hello, everybody. It's really good to be here. Thank you, Jamie, for um, connecting all of us and, and keeping us all updated. Um, I will start with some icebreaker questions and things. Um, so yeah, I grew up in um, in LA and I moved up to San Francisco to go to um, 
SFAI actually, but then I transferred into CCA last semester. And um, let's see, I became interested in art when I was really young. My mom would actually, um, she's a painter and I would sit and watch her paint all the time. And she was part of the LA Art Association and she really has been the one that has been helping me through my whole journey and everything. So to her, um, I chose CCA because I, well, I, I unfortunately had to um, end my sessions at SFAI, but um, I chose CCA because I wanted to stay in the Bay and I was getting introduced to so much of the Bay Area and all of everything that comes with it and mostly like queer identity and just all of the movements that happened in the Bay. And I just, I feel very connected to the Bay in a, in a special way. And I wanna keep making work that reflects my interaction with the Bay. Um, yeah, a lot of my work deals with my identity as a queer mixed race, um, person really and how I interact with the world and how I view the world and and trying to see the world in more of a transformative um, way really and more of a creative way mm -hmm. um, yeah and how what Jamie said I'm a painting and drawing major but I focus mostly on um, graphite drawings and yeah the work I'm making right now I actually is to do it has to do with my um, my identity as a queer. I'm just like making more work about being queer because <laughs> I love it so much <laughs> and and exploring more about it every single day. And I want to put that into my work. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And as um, you have other exhibitions and presentations of work, definitely share them with us and we can send it out to the group. And mm -hmm. I also wanted to make sure that Shailen and Kennedy were aware that there's also, you know, many artists who are on this call and a number of the artists were in past exhibitions that was um, kind of sponsored by the SF NIMWA group. And so um, we're also happy to think of this as a way to connect you with other working artists in the Bay Area, um, you know, with mentorship opportunities and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So we so appreciate you both being here. You're welcome to stay, you know, and participate in the meeting. If you have class or something, we also understand. Mm -hmm. um, but we thank you for your time. And we really look forward to getting to know more about you um, over, you know, the next, uh, you know, year or so um, while you're around. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, with that, we'll transition to the other segment of our program, which is featuring work by Sydney Cohn. And I'd like to invite Susan to um, come and introduce Sydney and talk about the exhibition that's up at her gallery right now as well. Thank you. Well, it's really nice to be here. And I think that soon we'll be meeting in person again, possibly. I mean, things are changing. So. Um, well, I'm really happy to introduce Sydney Cohen, who's the artist that's currently showing at the Fourth Wall Gallery. Uh, some of you may know her. She has taught at CCA for 20 years, color theory and painting and printmaking and drawing. Um, and she's, I, I think it's safe to say she's had a long obsession with color, and I do mean obsession, with color and surface, shape and space. Um, her most current work, which was done during, a lot of it during uh, shelter in place during the pandemic, consists of layers and layers of thin acrylic. And uh, as you maybe saw from the catalog that was sent out, the surface also consists of countless little spheres in which hints of color from previous layers show up. So you see the history there. And um, she covers and corrects and builds one coat after the other, which we'll also see in, in the slide presentation. Um, would, so the result is that the pieces are almost sculptural and the edges are uh, just as amazing as the uh, painting surface itself in a lot of cases. Um, well, the show is, is, has been up for two months and it's closing soon. And as the person, it's a small, 
casual gallery. So as the person who sits there and chats with everybody that comes in, it's been really interesting. Um, about half the people, Sydney is, is not a big self promoter and hasn't had a lot of shows in the past. It's just because that's her personality. She's a, very much a, a painter's painter and um, spends a ton of time in the studio. So I'd say about half the people who came to the studio. I'm hearing echoing, is it okay? You sound fine, I just muted them. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, so about half the people that came to the show have followed her for years and years. And, it, and so as soon as the, the first announcement went up, out, I started getting emails from people in Massachusetts and here and there. Oh, Sydney's having a show, I want one. <laughs> and then the other half of the people who came, it's been a big crowd, um, their reaction has been, uh, oh, I just, it makes me feel so good. The work just makes me feel so good, <laughs> and it's which is so delightful. And it made me think of a, um, a quote that I read of hers when she was being interviewed by, the, by SF MoMA's Open Space blog. And the interviewer asked, what advice do you give most to your students? And Sydney's answer is, you're a bear lost in a forest, and there's an old woman with long gray braids baking pies for you. And your job is to keep following the smell of the pie. That's your job, learning how to keep turning toward what is most delicious to you. I just love that as a painter. Um, uh, and her work is absolutely delicious. And uh, thank you so much, Sydney, for the opportunity to show your work. And I also wanna just uh, briefly thank Marlene Anjasia, who's here with us today. She's a CCA graduate and taught at San Jose State for many years, retired recently, and she helped curate the show and put together the catalog uh, that was sent to all of you, both design and writing and, and interview. And thank you to Lorna and Kim and Jamie for all being so spectacular. Okay, thanks. I'll just turn it over to you, Jamie and Sydney. Thank you, Susan. Okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen. Uh, congratulations, Shailen and Kennedy. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of your work. Um, uh, I do teach at CCA and I, I finished my undergrad at CCA also. So, um, and so many of the artists that I know in the world are because of CCA. Um, and I feel really grateful. I don't know, to be, to have lived in the Bay Area for so long and get to be here. Um, and I wanna thank Marlene and Susan. This has been a really nice show for me. Um, and uh, I really appreciate being there. This is my brush being left in the, <laughs> from being left in paint, um, one of my brushes and details from two of the paintings. Oops, let's see. Uh, and, and again, thanks for making this catalog too, really nice. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, about what I'm interested in and, uh, and why um, I paint what I paint. This is a painting from the show and made over, um, over the course of the pandemic. And to me, this is a really funny painting, like that it's flat, but round, that it's like a prohibition symbol, and, but it's also a planet, but a flat, I don't know, a flat planet. And I, I, called this, I wanted to call the show Home From Home um, because there was this kind of double living, I think for everybody. During the during the pandemic, where um, where you're in your home but you're thinking about life and how it goes and how different your things are um, now, uh, and I think it's just just made everybody think about what's important. Um, I wanted to just show a few images of uh, things that I look at. I'm super super visual and I do a lot of collecting of images and objects and. Um, so this is that painting at the very one of the beginning stages. And this is just something I had saved. I look at science a lot, but I love that there's, I mean, I wasn't looking at this when I did the painting, um, but they seem so related. Uh, and, um, you know, I take lots of pictures everywhere I go. I'm really interested in pattern and surface and touch. I, I feel like I'm very, um, attuned to my senses and maybe a little bit like Shailen, I had 
uh, both my parents are not, not that your parents are academics, both my parents are retired academics now. And I went to a really academic school right out of high school. And um, I didn't understand that I, I didn't understand how, um, what kind of learner I was. Uh, it just was, things were very confusing to me and I ended up taking time off and starting to paint. And I hated painting when I first started. I just couldn't stand it. It was awful, um, but I got I was like addicted to it and it was so hard and so interesting. And then I came to CCA when I was 24 or something. And I, I felt like I was learning more than I'd ever learned before. Um, because, it, because it just, uh, I think it's like honoring the senses, honoring kind of intuition, honoring these other ways of knowing things, honoring like being in your body. Um, and those are really important to me. So I, you know, I look at, I like this like repeating things that repeat. Um, I'm always looking at, like I like ceramic, I like a lot of crafts, ceramics and uh, nature. Um, I like looking at things that are printed at objects and design, I'm really interested in uh, phenomenology. Um, thinking about the brain and thinking about how the brain works and how consciousness happens and thinking about sort of natural processes. Um, so like Susan said, these paintings are made, what you can see, it's hard to see, I think in, in photos, but when you see a color in a dot, it's, the, it's from a previous layer and the paintings end up with lots and lots and lots of layers. And I'm not somebody who knows what they're doing ahead of time. Um, and that I just sort of follow what, what happens. Um, these are from a series I had. A, I was really lucky to have three years um, at the uh, Marin Headlands Artist Residency. I had a. I was an affiliate artist. So I had a studio there for three years. And one of the things I did while I was there was imagining, <laughs> imagining like. I have a lot of things that are happening in my head. I don't think they come totally come through. But I was imagining that um, like, what if space travel was more feminist? What if what if the woman centric world was more like integrated with science and thinking about what spaceships would look like and what time travel was like and kind of connecting it up with, um, with, I mean, all of the quantum physics stuff is I think so interesting uh, and, and also seems magical and, and wonderful. Um, so thinking about time travel, um, I just wanted to say, I think one of the things that um, looking at the work you can see is I'm really interested in layers um, and in different ways of building up a surface. I kind of aspire to be a minimalist, but I can't, I just can't do it. And I love the idea of like looking through something. There's another world behind the world you're looking at. And people who live with the paintings have, have said, um, you know, it's, I still see different things in this. And I like to imagine that if you're sitting in the right way, like all of a sudden that's a portal to this other world beyond. Um, this is an earlier painting and I, this was a big breakthrough to me thinking like these brick shapes and then letting the other parts show and when I first made these I people thought they were just weird and I don't think people like them very much but I was super excited something about like these little bits of color that showed through and kind of building up a space that doesn't totally make sense um, but and so is more about kind of history and memory and feeling. It's like the way space feels to me rather than how it looks. Um, this is also an earlier, an earlier painting. Um, thinking about these different ways to build space, I feel like there's often kind of this hole in the painting I'm trying to like build so that there's a, that it, it like draws you in or sucks you in. Um, this was from a series of uh, awards, dubious achievement awards. <laughs> but I think it's also this starts to be these houses and then I started making these houses and I called them sense houses and I thought of them as um, uh, just the way that you, you know, how much we attach to um, how things feel rather than just how they look and this idea that um, when you're going, when you're walking down in, you know, in a neighborhood and you see houses, like the outside of the house is so different from the life that's lived inside um, and all along. Uh, surface is really important to me in color. And these were part, these were at the, from the headlands also. And they were, again, thinking of this, like, because the, because the headlands is a defunct um, military uh, base, there are all these buildings that aren't doing their, what they used to do. <laughs> They're not serving the function that they used to. And so I was kind of imagining into those buildings um, the, that they were getting colors from space and like making sense of them. Um, and 
uh, this comes back to kind of weaving. When I was an undergrad at CCA, that was something that students, uh, that people always said to me, your, your work reminds me of fabric. And I, I don't know, it made me kind of crazy. I didn't understand what it meant, but um, of course it makes total sense to me. And, and the way that things are woven, like I, I feel like I always question how to put on paint, how to like how you make a painting, why you why things go where they go. Um, and I need to make up some kind of reason for it. And so I was making these things that were more about like almost about weaving um, and imagining imagining that. And then and then pattern and color and what it the way that it makes space, um, the way that one color next to another color kind of sings. Um, those are things that are really, they're really like shapes and color are so alive to me. And um, I think that they're hard to, that's, I mean, I hope that comes through in the paintings. I included a couple of, um, of uh, earlier stages of this painting, just, just like the paintings have tons and tons of layers and um, what you see, you know, you are seeing like back down to what was there, but then there's also all this other stuff that's underneath, which you can sometimes see the um, through texture. Um, but not not always. Um, and working with these dots, I think when I was in graduate school, I was making a lot of, I was doing drip dot paintings and uh, making these dots. Um, this is also about space, but a more recent one. Um, uh, <laughs> and to me, that's like, it's, it's just a way to slow down the repetitive nature of making the dots. You know, my hand just makes that shape. Um, with the brush. And I also work really wet with very wet paint and um, making these fades, I think is, it, it's part of, because the paint is so wet, I can just like add a drop of pigment to each row or each, yeah. And then it can fade kind of um, uh, seamlessly. Um, but, and so this is like three different stages of this painting. You, you can't see, here's a close up of that, this painting. This is one that's in the show. Like this has at least, there's like a pink layer and a brown layer and a white layer. I mean, this has, and it has a fade underneath each layer. Like these are things standing back, you might, you wouldn't notice it's, but it's important to me like that the paintings build up to a certain extent. Um, this is, I think I was making this when I was talking to Marlene that the Marlene, who's a totally wonderful person to talk about art with, I suggest it for everybody. Um, and I just read this book about fermentation and, uh, thinking about the way things are, surfaces are permeable and um, the way things kind of bubble up to kind of, to creation is, is made of these bubbles. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, again, I'm like always making up these stories, but I like that there's a story and a story and a story. Um, that's very pleasing to me. This goes back, this is a, a another weaving one um, where I'm weaving color <laughs> together. Uh, this is in the, so this is the first image I showed and here are some more stages of that. Um, and I don't know if it's, I, yeah, I'm not sure how much that comes through, um, but th they get touched and touched and touched. And touch is so, uh, so important to me. It was such a big deal to me when I started painting. Um, I went to a museum and I saw a Picasso and I, I, I'd seen them in, only in books and I was like, oh, the surface isn't interesting, but I didn't, I didn't even know the word surface. It just didn't do it for me. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then seeing paintings by women mostly that where the surface was really important and kind of resonating with it. And, and I think coming from a family of academics where words are so important, the kind of cognitive dissonance of what people are saying and the way things feel um, is so big to me. This is my studio now in West Oakland. Um, I have a great studio mate, uh, Libby Black, who is a um, Bay Area artist. And I have the studio because of Julia Goodman, who's here today, who's a, an amazing paper artist. Um, and uh, it's really fun having a studio near Libby because she's so straightforward. And I'm so, I just have to paint, 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 paint. I don't know where I'm going or what's happening. Um, this is like the cleanest my studio has ever been. <laughs> and, but I wanted to show my table and like how the, how the, let's see how the colors, like I mixing colors, mixing colors, mixing colors. And like, I always laugh when I'm telling my students to limit their palette because my palette just expands and expands and expands. Here's how wet the paint is um, when I'm painting. And, you know, you can see like mixing in another little drops of color. And I have these um, pigment dispersed in water 
that I mix with a bind, an acrylic binder. Okay, so this goes through, this is like mid partway through. Um, and this, so this shows a bunch of stages. So here's one, here's one, and then this goes like completely covering the red, although it's kind of showing through. Um, and then it goes through these different layers. Um, and the final, th this is even, this one, this is not where it stayed. Like that cheese, cheese it color was very upsetting to me, <laughs> but it kind of goes away and comes back. Anyway, um, the final painting, this is what the final painting looked like. And, you know, I, I don't, I'm always just invis interested in things that are invisible. Like I've always been interested in the things that are invisible and that no one's talking about. And I feel like it makes sense to me that this is a way that like that's embodied in the paintings. Um, yeah, those are also stages and some other stages. Um, this like space in a space in a space or binocular rivalry, I'm, um, it, this idea that your brain is taking in information all the time, but it's not, it's not showing it to your conscious brain. It only shows you some things. It decides what it's gonna show you. And the way that you can look at these and like see different spaces, um, some more layers and layers. Um, another painting that's in the, that I made over the pandemic time. Um, and I'm not sure about all of you, but like the creative, being able to be creative during this time has totally saved me. Um, some more stages. <laughs> And uh, I don't even know, you know, I think I painted over this painting in the end, but like these are some of the stages that it went through. And usually it's, I think of it as like riding your bike uphill. Like I'm riding, I'm like, some, sometimes the painting, it takes so many layers. It takes so long to get to where, to something. And then, and then I can like ride down the hill for a while, um, coast down the hill. And then some paintings come really easily after I figured things, some things out. So this is one that's in the show. And like, this is what it looks like at the end, but it's gone through all these, stages and I decided what I really liked was the how the dots look so it's almost like a textural thing in the end um you know and then like the weaving paintings and painting over and seeing what's left um this is uh this is a painting I gave to a really dear friend um and, and this was back in the house house time um so that's that's my talk and uh this is my um like this is the chair, the chair, the stool where I put paintings and the um, paint that's left over. Uh, and I'm happy to answer some questions if you like. Did Jamie, did I talk too long? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, that that was great. I feel like you just showed us so much work. I could go back and spend you know extra time with every image that you um, that you shared there. So thank you for that. Well, I'm happy to kick it off with a question, and then I can invite members um, of the group to unmute and ask questions as well. Um, but I mean, I mean, it feels so obvious, but what strikes me is just how color clearly matters so much to you. And I'm kind of curious, like, how you experience color, like it feels like it's beyond sight, it's more experiential than that. And I know you're even showing, um, you know, in preparation, just, you know, images that you had collected of other paintings that had color or something or a pattern or something that struck you. But I would love just to hear like personally what color feels like to you. I mean, I think it's a synesthetic thing because it's the most like color so alive to me. I can't even, I mean, I feel like it's, you know, showing or not showing the, the luckiest thing to me in the world is being able to paint all day and then leave the studio and the way the world looks when I leave. It's like the colors are like, they're so incredible um, and so alive. And I feel so, that's like the, I feel so grateful <laughs> to the universe for, for giving us that. And um, it's been really fun to teach color. I mean, that's, it was my most intuitive thing. I wasn't like an intuitive drawer. I learned how to draw at CCA. And I, I, um, I love teaching drawing because I, I know how helpful it was to like break things down and, and to be able to learn it. But um, teaching color has been interesting because learning all the color theory and thinking, you know, teaching, you're so lucky as a teacher, you get to creatively break things down and try to figure out how to um, express them, um, how to express what, and, and sequence how people can make sense of things. Um, but it just gets more and more interesting to me. Like none of the technical stuff kills it for me. It just, it gets inter more and more interesting. And if I were to um, <laughs> pivot my computer to my bookshelf, which is like, 
thousand, no, it's probably not that, but so many books on color. It's, it's just totally fascinating to me. And part of it is that like, we don't even know what it is. We don't, we have eyes. That's the only, we have eyes and there's light. That's the only reason we perceive it. That's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a mystery to me, Jamie, as well. I don't know. I, yeah. That's but enough. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, does anyone else in the group have a question for Sydney? If so, you're welcome to unmute yourself um, and and ask, and we'll we'll try to go through them one by one. I have a question. Amy. Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I want to know what you're reading. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so I I listen to books a lot, you know, all the time, and I listen to podcasts like everybody, and I love to listen to popular science information, information about the universe and especially about the brain and consciousness and cognitive neurology, that, that kind of thing. But I also listen to fiction all the time. Um, and I like to, I listen to, uh, now I, I listen to books all, so, does anyone else listen to books? Do, do you feel like, like it's reading? <laughs> I don't know if it's reading or not, but it is a way to, I, I just like to, I feel like, my hands are this, and my, if my hands and my eyes are working together, I'm so smart. And the rest of the time, I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> like I can't even, a, a thoughts are like get crammed in and I can't finish a sentence. But when I, my hands are working and my eyes are working. So being able to listen to something while I'm working is so inspiring. But so I listen to a lot of fiction, like huge range of fiction. Um, some of which I'd be embarrassed to admit to. And, but, and also some of which would I'd be very proud to say what are Amy what are you reading what are you interested what kind of reading do you do um right now I'm reading about climate change yeah and I'm reading about ecofeminism oh that's so cool and I'm listening to um I've read this but I'm listening to Sula by Toni Morrison who yeah. reads do you know who yeah. reads Sula and she does oh that's amazing yeah it's the best yeah, yeah. that's amazing and I just finished um, the sixth extinction, and now I'm reading the invention of nature. Oh, those are that's a those are that's a book list right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading a lot these days. That's so great. Yeah. The invention of nature may be one of my favorite books. It's very fascinating. Who just said that? Carly. Oh hi. <laughs> it's such a good book. I can't. I wish I didn't have to do anything else right now because <laughs> I keep reading it. Yeah. Who's the writer? Who's the right? Who's the author? Andrea Wolf, oh. W U L F, Wolf. And it all—it's about Alexander von Humboldt. Oh, that sounds amazing. It's mm -hmm. really good. Thank you. Do I see Julia with a hand up? Have you read *Bark Skins* by Annie Proulx? It's more fiction-like, but it's in really very environmental and you know about the earth and the trees and. Good. There's another fiction book that talks a lot about um, about evolution that I just totally love that I read this summer, which is called Family of Origin um, mm. by somebody. But I see, I can't remember her name for a second. Sydney, can I? Um, well, you are one of my favorite colorists, I have to say. Um, Michael and I were lucky to take a like intro to color theory quick power session with Sydney, and I want to take the whole class. Um, but um, I have two questions about your paintings. Um, one, I've seen a lot of them in person and, and um, total confession, we live with one. There's one in our bedroom. So I wake up and see it every morning. Um, but the surface, like a lot of times acrylic paint I ha pushes me away because I feel like there's a plasticness to it. Yeah. But your surface aside from being like sculptural and archaeological in the buildup of layers has such a like matte chalky velvety feeling that's really unique in my experience to your painting so I'd love for you to talk more about that surface choice like I've never seen a, a, a reflection or a shimmer off of it mm -hmm. and the second question is the edges of your painting to me are such this like um generous exposure of the layers you know um and they they are their own sculpture like I could just look at the sides of your paintings and be totally satisfied so I was wondering if you could talk about the surface quality that you pick and the built the um sides of the paintings I'm sure that's a what a nice what a generous question Julia 
um, the, you know, just through lots of experimentation, um, I was painting all in oil, but I, like a lot of people, it, the solvents build up and you become allergic to it. So I had, I also have a terror of burning down a house and I had my studio in my house for a while. And like, I've heard so many horrible stories about people burning down their studio because of rags with solvents. Anyway, I, um, when I, so I decided I had to move over to acrylic and, uh, and then just like tons and tons of experimenting with different binders and different mixes and different ways of doing ways of doing it. But I have a binder that I really love that I buy by the case. If, <laughs> and uh, um, just an, a, like an ultra matte binder that, um, but I love acrylic because I, I like to paint on lots of paintings at one time. I paint flat, that, that kind of goes to the, the edges, the color drips down the edges. Um, is one of the things Julie is talking about. And it's because I paint flat and I like to paint on lots of paintings and put a layer on every single day, you know, a different, a new layer. And with oil paint, you have to wait a really long time for things to dry. And with acrylic, it's been, it's amazing. Like I put on a layer and come back the next morning and it's, I can put another layer on it. So that feels really wonderful. Yeah, I'm happy to talk actual products with anybody who wants to know the actual <laughs> products, but the matte, that matte look, I just love. And it, I think it comes from ceramics. I just, I love mm -hmm. the way that glazes look, especially matte glazes. Oh, I just love them. I could, I, you know, the way that it feels. And so, um, but there's like a milkiness to each of the colors that's unique to me. I, you know, like I, think a, I think it's from, it's, you know, I paint very wet. So they're wet when they dry. And so they, it, like the paint, makes its own edges mm. like it spills out that's yeah I think that's part of the thing yeah. but it, yeah it's just about experimenting with different different binders and that it was mm -hmm. a big like um it was really nice to um people say encaustic a lot or or ask about oil I mean that's that's so nice I um yeah I forgot what I was gonna say uh yeah I love that yeah, surface is really important. And just trying different, oh, it was a big for me. There's this company called Gera Paint in New York mm -hmm. and they sell these pigment dispersed in water. So you're not gonna breathe mm -hmm. the pigment and they have many more colors than, mm -hmm. um, than are sold in acrylic paints usually. And you mix those with a binder, like a matte medium or a gel medium or something like that. And that was really nice. I recommend them, they're amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a big deal to get to mix the, mix the colors. Thanks, Julia. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, people say encaustic a lot. And I think it's, I think it's part of the medium. It's like it, it does, there's some, some of the solids that make it so matte are, have white in them. Um, but also it, because it can, it like the, it's, I think it's also the way the pigment is suspended in that, in the mm -hmm. encaustic. I mean, I'm so interested in like fluid dynamics and how, and those things get proved over and over when you're painting, you know, like so many natural forces happen. Like when I read about, you know, geology or physics, like those things, you're encountering those things in your studio all the time. Probably, you know, with paper, I'm sure, like probably with lots of materials in different ways, but um, I love that, that this studio can be this like microcosm of the universe. I have a question for you. Sure. I, I'm very intrigued by the progression of your paintings and how you show the stages. I don't know how to paint. I have no artistic ability, but I'm, I love seeing it. How do you know when to stop? When is the <laughs> final, not really the final? What? Yeah. When do you stop? I mean, sometimes something cooks, has to cook in the studio, meaning like for a year before it keeps on going and finds its place. But, um, you know, I think that you're, mm -hmm. When you're paint, when I'm painting, I'm and maybe this is I don't know, Marlene. You could say it tr also if this is works for you, but or happens for you. But like I feel like I'm looking for something. I'm looking for some information that's not coming from me. It's like something outside of me, and so it, it's not like I'm trying to finish every painting. I'm like looking for the thing for the inf for the the thing, and so I have to keep going until the thing comes. And sometimes I'm wrong. Like I think something's not done and someone comes in the studio and takes and is like, no, that is done. You have to, you know, look at it in, in a week and takes it. Um, often I'm wrong, I think. <laughs> or I think something's done and it's not quite done, but I think it's, it is, yeah, I don't think it's, it's not about what I, 
want. It's like what, what I was, I don't know, information I was trying to get. Kind of like that aha moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It speaks to you perhaps. Say that again, sorry. That oh. maybe speaks to you. Yeah, oh, for sure. Oh, that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a question. It brings to mind, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, Aboriginal art, your, your technique. Have you studied Aboriginal art and also what you said about the universe and you know uh, metaphysical kind of stuff? That's their, kind of their path too. And then that, have you studied any Aboriginal uh, art? You know, I've looked at a lot, but I haven't read that much about, you know, I've read like, yeah. I, I mean, I've read like what the artist is saying about what it means to them and what kind of yeah. information is there. I feel really interested in that, but I, I don't feel like I understand it at all. I, but I, I love looking, I love looking at it. I think it's hard to, under, it's hard, to hard to explain. Like someone asked me in graduate school, like why the dot kind of aggressively? And I always was like, I was like stunned. I was like, because the dot, <laughs> I don't, I don't know why it's, you know, I think there is that atomic thing of like things being made up of lots of information. Do you know a lot about about Aboriginal art? No, not a lot, but I've read some different things and I've, I've, I, I own a few pieces and so I'm familiar with, they layer and they use the dots. I, I think you might be right too. It's about energy, you know, yeah. to the scientific thing. Yeah. And, atoms and, you know, their thing is about paths and journeys and connections and, uh, that so. That's so, it sounds so good. Yes, I would love to look more into that. Yeah, you might enjoy that. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I have another question, but if I'm happy to let someone else go first. Do I see, oh, I think, do I see Tracy's hand? Yes, um, just a quick follow-up since, you know, it seems, it seems like your, your process is intellectual and intuitive in some combination I, I find very interesting. Um, but uh, given how much the paintings, some of the paintings seem to change over time, yeah. what is the, how long does it take to complete those, those big complicated ones? You know, it's just really different. Some, you know, some, I, I mean, I, like I'm really, I find the world really upsetting <laughs> and like I find interaction with humans wonderful but it's like in small doses like being in the studio by myself and working is like my favorite thing to do if the world was ending that's what I would go and you know mix colors um in my studio so and like the best the most progress happens when I can go in every day you know it's not always like that but um it just depends some are like real fighters and I like some take you know two years or even I could come back to much later and some, you know, maybe six sessions of painting on them. Some are faster, you know, sometimes it just switches. It's like something I've been working, working, working. And then, and then overnight it's like, it shifts and then it's only two sessions till it, till it changes. Um, yeah, so it's really, it just depends totally on the painting. Um, and probably my, you know, how, clear I'm receiving the transmissions I don't know <laughs> yeah it just it really depends thanks for asking yeah well I know one thing that struck me you know when we were speaking earlier was that you know like I think you're you're a collector of images and reference points and shapes and colors and all of this and you showed some really interesting examples where there might have been like a photograph that you you know had seen or that you had taken years prior and then you know you're kind of you finish a painting and then you're looking back and there's like an almost identical shape or you know color in it and so I don't know I'm just curious in that like how you're absorbing and you're kind of this you know sponge reworking all of these images and then collecting it into something that makes sense to you. But could you maybe talk about your process of collecting all of these, you know, images and references? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have learning differences, you know, but I'm from a time where it wasn't those, you know, it wasn't diagnosed with that. But like, the kind of the computer was this amazing revelation to me where you where you can write things and then move them around. Like when I was in college, we had word processors, but you couldn't it was really a typewriter. Like you, you, 
it was so hard for me to organize my thoughts first, but once the computer came and I could like move the ideas around, like and visually see them, everything, like writing became really interesting. Um, and, and that the computer's so visual. I mean, I love books and I love taking walks in the real world also, but um, I, yeah, I just, I love looking, I don't know, I love looking at things. And I was, when I was first met with Jamie and Susan uh, and showed them my slides, um, I guess for a 20 minute presentation, you're supposed to have 20 slides, I had a hundred and something. And a lot of them were like these photographs, some are like of Trump or something. It, it's not so much the content, but I get the colors and the arrangement of shapes like really hit me. And um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, that's like a real pleasure. Um, and that this is like visual, visual learning. <laughs> and I think it's also a rebellion against having being like I was supposed to be this, you know, academic person. And I, I just, I'm not a linear thinker. I'm not a concrete thinker. Um, and so looking, touching, finding, putting together, those are things that really make sense to me. Yeah. But I love that you can keep all like on your phone, you can take pictures, you can take images and like screenshots and then I can arrange them on my on my desktop. I don't know, I love that. Does anybody else like that? I don't, I don't my friend's mom, I remember when I was in high school, she she started taking pictures of our compost, um, compost, like the bowl that she used for her compost every day. And I remember her my friend showing me the pictures that her mom had taken of the compost, and I was like, Oh, I totally understand this. They're beautiful little compositions, but I didn't have language for that. I didn't think of myself as an artist, but I was like, yeah, yep, <laughs> the compost. Maybe coming late to it too is like makes it more valuable somehow. I like I didn't paint in high school. I I I was interested in photography, but I didn't. I think if you can't if you feel that you can't draw, you feel you're not an artist. And I yeah. <laughs> and shape and color, but I were my were my language, but I didn't understand that that was part of being an artist. Yeah. So, what made you start painting? Um, I dropped out of Bryn Mawr College, and I <laughs> my parents were very kind to uh, let me do that. And I moved to Vermont, and I like worked in the Putney Co-op, and I started. I, there was like a little painting school and they gave me the key and let me go in there. And like I said, I hated it. I was furious. I didn't understand anything about it. And it, it was a real, tr like it was, I feel really lucky because I was, you know, trying to observationally paint and I made up all this like, like words for things, but they were really sounds. Like I didn't understand the value structure, like value is that things can go from light to dark and there are an infinite stops along the way, but you could agree that there's like a middle gray, you know, middle between the two white and black. Anyway, I didn't know that that was a thing. So I called, I had like squeaks that I got, I don't know. <laughs> like I was, I really, like I really was not good at it and I hated it, but I was, it was so interesting. And like every painting was so, like I felt like I was learning so much. Plus it's, painting is a thing you can do by yourself, you know, and for hours. <laughs> And that's like some I know are I know people from art school who I thought were amazing painters, but after they graduated, they said I can't be alone this much. Like that's just not who I am. Um, but I that's that is who I am. Um, yeah, that's great. We probably have time for one more question. Susan, did you have a question? I, oh, was there someone else? I I, I have. Okay, go my, ahead. Yeah. Um, Sydney, are there any, um, this is sort of a typical question, but but I was wondering it, are there any artists or movements that are especially important to you or have been important to you? Uh, thank you for asking that. Going to the some of the things that I looked at, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from my other, from my longer thing um, that I was, this is just a photo I, I'd have found, I don't know why. Um, let's see why I liked it. Um, this was also a thing like putting photos that I found against paintings that happened before or later. Oh wait, this isn't what you asked, I'm sorry. Um, so Voyard was one of the people that I really, really loved, Edward mm -hmm. Voyard, um, 18th century, end of 18th century, no, end of 19th century. Uh -oh. End of 19th century. End of 19th century. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, end of 19th century uh, was a painter that I really, really loved. And I think it's something about the colors and the shapes and the kind of 
the, the colors and the shapes subsume mm -hmm. the meaning or they're just as, they're more, almost more important than anything. And um, I remember seeing, I love these paintings. I just love them. Um, and I remember see this, this painting is at the um, Museum of Modern Art in New York. And um, I just like this, this one kind of killed me. I like, I love that it's his mom and his sister that there'd be these big shapes, but the patterns and like her dress is coming into the pattern, but also she's like, going down to try to fit into the canvas, it's so weird. Um, and then um, looking at it up close that you could see these were just like dumb white dots or, or you know, like especially towards the edge. Uh, that like, I was, that, I don't know, there's something about like it's paint and it's a thing, it's paint and it's a thing, that kind of doubleness mm -hmm. that I just loved. And it's so physical, like these, Weird, big, weird dots. Anyway, that was, he, he's an artist I really like, but that's not. Um, okay, that's, I thought I had another thing. Um, uh, but, oh, I was gonna say, I have, I have these incredible, I'm gonna share again one more time. Um, is it sharing still? Yeah. Yeah, it was still sharing, although it went out of full screen view now. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had these incredible students, um, one of, and, and, now I've been teaching a long time. So uh, this is Tasha Stimmage, who's unbelievable. Oh, hit, hit share again, it bumped you out. I'm sorry. Oh, it's just, it stopped sharing when you've switched views. If you just sure. want to hit share again. Thank you. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Tasha Stimmage, who, she was my TA for a whole year. I, she went, she was a grad student at CCA. She's amazing um you should three knees is her um instagram thing and she's also like really um interested in color and one of the things that i love from my student art like artists that i've met when they were students is the activism part of their work um and the kind of activism that's but it's like embodied activism um arlene um career these are all cca students former CCCA students, I'm sorry. Um, Arlene Correa, Carrera, Carrera, sorry, now I can't go back, um, is, is another student who I, who I had when she was a freshman, who I just totally ama was amazing. And Lucasa Bronfabrissimo, also somebody you should look up, her work is incredible. And um, I, I met her when she was 16, when she started, she took pre-college classes at CCA. Um, so the, and then uh, creative, Creative Growth, Creativity Explored, NIAD, those are places that are um, art for um, developmentally disabled adults. Is that is that right, Julia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that Where the art is unbelievable. Oh my God, it's so amazing. Um, and then I love like minimalism, but I didn't understand, I don't think I understood what minimalism was supposed to be about. Like it, it, it was never cold to me. I liked, it was like warm, warm minimalism. So like Milton Avery or, um, or, uh, Mary Heilman. Do you know Mary Heilman's work? She's super amazing. Also, so, like confusing to me. What is that? Um, and yeah, those are some artists that I love. And I and I oh Ruth Asawa. Oh, she's a totally wonderful um, fiber artist. Mm -hmm. I think that's 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 those are some artists that I really love. Okay, I'm stopping sharing. That's such a great list, Sydney. And thank you so much for sharing um, your work with us, your process, you. your thinking and all of that. Let's just give like a little collective round of applause yeah. um, for Sydney. And thank you for being here so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really um, appreciate yeah. the opportunity. I I just wanted to say something, Jamie, I thought that Susan Fisher Sterling, F Susan, did you want to say something? Um, I thought I saw you raise your hand. <laughs> Actually, I just was so impressed that all the, uh, at not just the committee members, but also all the artists who are here today. I think that's really great. I think mm -hmm. that is a different kind of energy than you see in a lot of these calls. And I just wanted to recognize that. That's a measure, I think, of people's respect for Sydney, which oh. I think is great. Oh, thank that's you. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Tell me the name of the book that you, that you recommended, Amy. One more time. Uh, the... Invention of nature. Invention of nature. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, uh, Smithsonian American Art Museum did a show on Alexander von Humboldt last year. So there's a catalog on that that's a little easier to read. <laughs> <laughs> that summarizes his ideas, which really helps. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah.
That's great. If anyone wants to put their book recommendations in the chat, I can save the chat and we can email that out <laughs> to the whole group after because I think that was a really productive part of the conversation with a lot of interest. So feel free just even if you don't know the author, just throw the title and I'm sure we can we can find it for you. That that would be great. And I can't thank Sydney and Susan enough for this program and Shaylin, thank you for being here. And also I want to welcome Denise Sobo. I think this is the first time we've seen you online for <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Great to see you. And it's wonderful to see all of you. Um, we don't get to get together very much, but it's just so much fun to see all the faces and to have this great time together. So I don't know if anyone else has a comment, um, but this is great. Thank you so much, Susan and Sydney. Thank you very much. Really. Thank you. And of course, Jamie. And of course, Jamie, I wanted to say you were very shy about it, but our two CCA scholarships are in honor of um, Jamie for all of the work she's done with our online programs and especially in um, hosting us at Hubble Street Galleries for both of our local Women to Watch exhibitions, which have been great. And um, so we thank you for all of that. Thank you, everyone. It's thank such a all. pleasure to be part of this. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Well, I guess can I, we'll can I say one thing? Yes, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, it was a fabulous sh event, everyone. Thank you so much for all your input and organization. Um, I just would like to remind you for what our next event will be, uh, which is Wednesday, April 14th with Francis Mill, art and art gallery owner. And he's going to be talking about Joan Brown. So if Mm -hmm. the, the paperless post has been sent out. Um, if you can, if you have an RSVP already, if you could please do that, that would be great. And uh, nice seeing everyone. Thank you, Thank Robin. You. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Take care. Yeah, Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye.